Ever wondered what would happen if we sent viruses to space? Not astronauts, not bacteria, but viruses. Tiny, bizarre, not quite alive particles that can take <laughs> down entire ecosystems. Yeah, we've launched those into orbit. On purpose. And the results? Let's just say space doesn't make them weaker. In fact, it might do the opposite. Scientists have been sending viruses into space since the 1960s. From NASA to the European Space Agency to Russian cosmonauts, viral samples have flown aboard the International Space Station. But here's the weird part. They're not sending them to study disease. They're sending them to study life, or at least, how life behaves when you remove gravity. Because space changes everything. Your bones get thinner, your blood shifts, and your immune system. It drops its guard, which makes space a perfect lab for viruses. In one study, astronauts exposed to Epstein-Barr virus, the one linked to mono, showed reactivation during long missions. Another virus, the cytomegalovirus, became more active in orbit. Same people, same immune systems, just different gravity. So what's actually happening? Let's break it down. Viruses don't float around attacking people randomly. They need living cells to reproduce. They're more like sneaky USB drives than creatures. Small packets of genetic code wrapped in a protein shell. But they're also incredibly adaptive. And when you take them into space, that adaptability gets tested. So scientists aren't just sending viruses up to observe them, they're using them. Viruses are incredibly efficient at entering cells. That makes them ideal tools for gene therapy, drug delivery, and synthetic biology. And in space, those tools are tested under pressure. No gravity, no contamination, just pure isolated experimentation. Some researchers are even designing virus-based nanomachines, microscopic tools that could help grow organs in orbit. Others are working on virus-driven protein production to support long-term missions. Imagine printing medicine inside your body during a flight to Mars. It sounds like science fiction, but it's already happening in labs, on Earth and off it. And that leads to a huge ethical dilemma. If we send viruses to another planet, even in a sealed lab, and they survive, did we just contaminate that world? There's a field called planetary protection. Its main rule, don't mess with alien environments. Not because of monsters, but because we might only get one chance to study what's really out there. If Earth microbes, or viruses, colonize another world, we might never know what was there before. Or worse, we might create something new. A virus mutating in Martian soil, a dormant gene combining with alien chemistry, a feedback loop we didn't anticipate. Now, let's zoom out. Viruses aren't just Earth's problem. Some scientists believe they might actually be older than life itself. There's a theory called panspermia, the idea that life spreads through space via comets and meteors. And viruses, they're the perfect passengers, tiny, tough, and don't need to breathe. Some experiments even suggest certain viruses can survive vacuum, radiation, and extreme temperatures, at least temporarily, which means it's possible that viral fragments helped shape life on Earth, or even started it. That sore throat you had last month could be a distant descendant of space DNA. Let's go deeper. Most people think of viruses as villains, invaders, but in reality, Viruses are part of us. Around 8% of your genome is viral, leftovers from infections that got stitched into your DNA and never left. Some of those viral codes protect embryos, others regulate your immune system, a few even helped build your brain. So when we ask, can viruses survive in space? What we're really asking is, can parts of us survive out there too? Viruses don't eat, breathe, or move. That's actually their superpower. No metabolism means they don't depend on stable environments. In the cold, dry vacuum of space, they don't break, they just wait. Some viruses enter a kind of suspended animation. No activity, no damage, just silent preservation. They don't die, they don't even age. They pause. In fact, viruses exposed on the outside of satellites, yes, actually in space, 
were recovered back on Earth. And when scientists tested them, they reactivated, they weren't destroyed, just paused. Now imagine one of those viruses thawing out in an alien sea, drifting into contact with something completely unknown. What happens next? Nobody knows, but someone has to ask. Because if we're serious about living in space, we're not just bringing dreams and tech. We're bringing baggage, and not all of it is friendly. Picture this. You're in a Mars base, 12 people, one dormant virus. Nothing unusual until microgravity, radiation, and stress flip the switch. It doesn't kill anyone, but it spreads, and then it mutates. Now imagine that virus meeting engineered material, food cultures, microbial scaffolds, synthetic proteins. They weren't built to defend themselves. The virus doesn't just survive, it changes. It creates something new. Back on Earth, samples return. Three months later, the headlines read, Unexpected recombination found in Martian microbe. We don't know what it means yet, but it started with something invisible and familiar. That's why researchers are developing something called a genetic dead switch, built-in code that turns viruses off if they leave Earth's protection. We can't stop mutation, but we can design boundaries. Before anything launches, it's sequenced, documented, monitored. Because if a virus from here adapts out there, we're not just managing infection, we're managing transformation. So what if a virus that evolved here adapts out there? It doesn't just survive, it becomes something else. And we're not just studying it anymore. We're a part of it. Maybe we need to stop seeing viruses as invaders and start seeing them as explorers. Because in a strange way, they've already done what we're trying to do. They crossed worlds, they shaped evolution, they survived the extremes. And now, they ride our rockets, silent, waiting, watching. So web weavers, what do you think? Should we keep sending viruses into orbit to study them? Or are we opening a door we won't be able to close? Is this the beginning of interplanetary biology? Or the first mistake we make on another world? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And next time you look up at the stars, ask yourself one question. What's already out there? Or what's already inside us? Catch you next time, Digital Explorers. Bye-bye.